can't make up a mind which way to go. Linda, don't move. Belchman Food Corporation takes over international pictures. Whoopi Goldberg and John Kennedy Jr. announce surprise engagement. And the long-awaited motion picture epic Brain Fever strives to cure the diseased career of Frederico Bloom. Hi, I'm Desiree Abley Pleasant. I'm Tinker Whittier Foreskin. Welcome to Tinseltown Tavern. The show that brings you all the hard-hitting information from inside the entertainment industry. In our warm, chatty format with little regard for journalistic integrity. If it's whispered in a chic cafe or scribbled in a trendy restroom, you'll be the first to hear it repeated on Tinseltown Tattler. Hi, everybody. We're happy to be taping from beautiful Marina Del Rey this week. Should give you a chance to work on your tan, Tinker. You bet. But listen, you look like quite the sun worshiper today. A new dress? On uh, my salary. <laughs> <laughs> Topping the entertainment news this week is the wild gossip surrounding Frederico Bloom's latest cinematic venture, the $40 million epic, Brain Fever. Brain Fever is finished. No more money for that crazy lunatic running around in the jungle. Not one fucking dime. Even Hollywood's harshest critics are drooling in anticipation of Bloom's long-awaited follow-up to his Oscar-winning film, Express Train to My Heart. And with good reason. Bloom has not made a film in nearly four years, and with his 30th birthday only weeks away, he's in danger of losing his reputation as America's genius for a Pepsi generation. You know, Fred, oh. this picture, it might be fabulous once you start to shoot it. No, it won't. You know this picture, Spot, so do I. Hey, everyone's against me, from the producers right down to the PAs. It's a goddamn conspiracy. Ah, well, you are paranoid. No, I am not. And don't ever call me paranoid. Rumors of sexual excess, drug addiction, and an all-around bad attitude has hurt Bloom's marketability in the eyes of many Hollywood power brokers. What the hell kind of film you make anyway? Uh, you probably wouldn't understand it. It's an art film. Art, art. Well, there it is. A movie don't make you laugh, make you cry, or, or give you a heart out and make some of the shit. Ooh, he would have been a great producer. <laughs> There was a time when I thought, uh, well, everyone in the industry thought that my career was over. You know, my creative juices had been sapped. I hadn't produced a single frame of worthy material in two, three years. Please, Ben, trust me. Huh? Hey, trust me. <laughs> I'm on the verge of something tremendous. No, and I'm just that close to breaking through. All I need is a little more time. You're in worse shape than I told my friend. No, please, Ben, I'm begging you. Get off my left, Fred. You are sick. I was a sort of drug addict. I was slipping from bed to bed like a greased pig. I'm telling you, this picture, it's going to be a hit. There isn't going to be any picture. The boys from LA were right. You've gone crazy. You're out of control. No, no, no. Hey, hey, I'm fine. It's just these big bats, Ben. They're uh, flying we, straight at me. We can't go through with this thing, Fred. No, no, no. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Amigo mio, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fred, but we have to pull the plug. Concentrate. Try and visualize the image sequence. Take it slowly. Good. That's it. Keep going. Oh, shit. I'm losing it. Oh. Uh, hey, it's tuning me out. Uh, it's not working. Hey, give me another hit. You've already had three today. I don't care. I, I need it. Give me another fucking hit. Here. <laughs> And now, arts correspondent Terry Bilgewater explores the mysterious location for the Bloom Sanchez production of Brain Fever. Fernando Poo, 
The rugged coastline and lush tropical greenery seem to suggest the mystical world of shamans, aborigines and exotic wildlife hidden beneath this most primitive of landscapes. However, upon further inspection... I'm afraid you are suffering the symptoms of a bizarre and dangerous tropical disease. You must allow me to perform a brief preliminary examination. Please, stick out your tongue and say, ah! via direct cardiac injection. Oh. Routine procedure in these cases. Built in 1935, during the height of the Great Depression, by rubber magnate and renowned dilettante Trevor Sebastian Dubois, now Condom Coa stands inactive. A crumbling, diseased monolith from a bygone era. So we had to send the niggas down to the store to buy milk crates. <laughs> oh. When I called Felicity about... Uh, using condom coa as location for my next brilliant project, brain fever. Oh. She had faith in me. She said, Fred, I know you're just a shell of a man, but I want to help you get back on your feet. She let me use the place. She's shown me every courtesy. She had faith in me when no one else did. I feel strangely at home here. Come on in. Delta One coming closer. We need a tiger running along this shot. Gentlemen, would you get the mortars ready? Good afternoon, America. Arts correspondent Terry Bilgewater on the war-torn African island of Fernando Po. This diminutive nation is in the midst of one of the bloodiest civil wars in recent memory. So that is the situation. My guess is that loyalist forces have retreated to a point approximately 75 kilometers to the south, leaving us isolated between the two boring factions. <laughs> What is life but the brief episode of luminous intensity wedged between the vast expanses of an endless void? Why? We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Are we back? Right now, I'm standing at the edge of an airfield in the remote, mountainous province of Naga Bamba Bimbo, one of the last loyalist strongholds. This morning, Commander Kokole issued a statement promising to annihilate every last vestige of what he referred to as, quote, the imperialist, capitalist, Zionist, racist, and incredibly cheap government of his predecessor. He ended his communique with the words, surrender now, you miserable pigs. I'm a, I'm a deus ex machina. What? Yeah, yeah, plot device. Uh, introduced by the writers in a moment of desperation. Now begins the final movement of the symphony that we call life. Oh, a slideshow! You see, Jimmy, the pineal gland is an itty bitty gland located at the base of the brain. Now, for centuries, doctors speculated about its function, but no one ever knew exactly what it did until Dr. Von Toxwans oh. unlocked his secrets. Oh. That's right! I know all about you and your experiments. You, you know the nefarious Nazi neurologist. Such harsh words, Mr. Stewart. Well, well, what did you say? I said such harsh words, Mr. Stewart. What? Would we have please turn down that mule? Hey, don't get cranky. I wasn't getting cranky. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. I was yes, not. Not argue, Mr. Stewart. What would you say if I told you that right now I was engaged in the greatest experiment in the history of motion pictures? We are experiencing
mounting technical difficulties. Yes, people are being killed, property destroyed, an entire nation laid to waste. Go on! Get out of here! Take out the fucking piano with you! I am pioneering oh, wow. technology that is light years ahead of the ridiculous oh, spectacles that pass for movies in your allegedly backwards industry. I'm exploring the untapped resources of the human mind. I'm wicked, Nancy. Wicked to the core. <laughs> you ain't wicked. Just a little fucked up. Please. That still doesn't explain why I, Teddy Bilgewater, a world-renowned arts correspondent and theatre critic, have been sent on this exceedingly dangerous and trivial assignment. It should normally be handled by somebody from the International Affairs Bureau. No, it doesn't explain it at all, not by a long shot. I am altering the very structure of art, of consciousness, of life as we know it! Why cannot we go back to the way things were before Glenn Fennell? You can't go home again, Demi. But could not we go somewhere else? Somewhere far away? Somewhere over the rainbow! Oh, hey, hey, don't even think about it! The reason I'm here is because some fucking editor decided to do a, a follow-up story on Federico Bloom, who is trapped at the Condom Coa rubber, rubber Plantation where he's being filming his epic brain fever. We are experiencing... Yes, I'm sure you're all dying to know what has become of Federico Bloom and his intrepid band of cinematic pioneers. <laughs> so I guess this is it? Yeah, I, I, I guess so. Just tell me one thing, Fred. Did you ever really love me? I don't know. That was a long time ago. I know I love you. Oh, yeah? How do you know? Back then, we were just a couple of crazy kids living out of fantasy. All the booze, the drugs, the wild parties. You could have imagined the whole thing for all you know. I may have imagined things in my life, right? But not my love for you. Sure, maybe there were lots of drugs and lots of booze, but I still love you. There was something like magic between us, a certain incandescent spark of passion, you know? I can't put it into words I have to sing, a music maestro! No, that's it! That's it! Get out! Get out! Frankly, I'm more concerned about being trapped in the middle of this godforsaken little country, surrounded by cannibals. But things aren't all bad. They're not! No, Jimmy, and I'll tell you why. Gray skies are gonna clear up. Put on a happy face. Push off the clouds and cheer up. Put on a happy face. We're experiencing tech. It seems that. Uh, Christ! Look, let's take cover. Come on. Right, it's every man for himself. Let, let the women and children can wait. I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist. Shoot the bloody cameraman. Look, I've got lots of money. I, I can pay.